I'm John King in Columbia, South Carolina. Back in a moment to our special coverage of the Republican Presidential Forum here today. Some quick housekeeping. First, if you've been with us for most of, much of the past 90 minutes or so, you've noticed the candidates are being asked as they come out in order pretty much the same questions. They are in a sequestered room while the other candidates are facing the questions, so they do not hear their rivals' answers as they are asked questions about a jobs program, about abortion rights, about the role of the federal government. Ron Paul, the libertarian Republican from Texas, answering questions now about his views on the 14th Amendment. Let's resume our live coverage. Federal court, so the states could immediately do what they want, and we wouldn't have wasted the last 10 years trying to, uh, to, to stop the abortion. But when you refer and use the 14th Amendment, it, in, in, it implies that the 14th Amendment repealed the 9th and the 10th Amendment, and it, that don't quite read that into that, the people who use the 14th to do almost anything they want because it's now a federal government. It's a, and it is true, the 14th Amendment has been used to increase the size and scope of the federal government, which I disagree with because I think it should be held at the local level. But in no way should you interpret the 14th Amendment as repealing the 10th Amendment in particular. Well, it's certainly true that any constitutional provision can be abused, and many of them have been abused. But the language of the 14th Amendment is very clear. It, it says that no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process, process of law, or deny to any person the equal protection of the laws. But if, so, if that were, were the case, they would have taken, uh, no states would be involved in dealing with, with murder, uh, injuries, uh, second degree murder, manslaughter, uh, robbery, armed robbery, everything is still states. So you, if you just can't pick out one, you should have no state laws against murders. Uh, Under well, those, your circumstances, this should be a, state, a federal issue. Uh, well, only if the murder laws are being denied to the protection, uh, the protection of the murder laws are being denied to a class of people. So, for example, if uh, the state withdrew its protections against killing, uh, if the person killed is of a certain race or ethnic group, then certainly under the 14th Amendment, the national government would be empowered to act. So because if it withdraws its protection, the state withdraws its protection from a class of human beings, let's say the unborn, or if it were the newly born or handicapped newborns, wouldn't that uh, call for, not only permit, but call for action at the national level well, under Section 1 of the 14th Amendment? If, uh, if you wanted to stretch interpretation and enhance the uh, power of the central government, and rather than enhancing the power of the local government, because they deal with all acts of violence, I mean, I think they're quite capable of doing it. Some of these things are, are more difficult. There are some states have uh, have capital punishment some places don't and it's still it's still it, it, it I can understand your argument but I think it really rejects the notion that the states were part of this republic that we created so if you get gradualism of a sending more and more soon as the interstate commerce clause soon, soon as the general welfare clause and I think when we can and we and we certainly can we've done it for all our history to deal with violence and murder this has always been a state issue, and I uh, don't see why we uh, would have to turn that into a federal issue. Matter of fact, the founders never even thought we should have, uh, you, you know, a federal police force, but we, we do. We have a federal police force, and you're sort of asking for more policemen, you know, at the federal level, and uh, I, I don't understand what, uh, why we've met so much resistance on uh, returning the jurisdiction or removing the jurisdiction from the federal court. Courts. If we've done that 10 years ago, you'd say millions and millions of abortions being done because the states could have prohibited it right away. You could have done it with a majority vote with the president signing it. You, you wouldn't have had to wait for the Constitution to be changed. You wouldn't have to uh, uh, wait for uh, Roe versus Wade to be repealed by the courts. Well, uh, Congressman Paul, if I can shift uh, to another uh, issue. Uh, poverty is a reality in the United States of America, unfortunately, we're the greatest, wealthiest country in the world. We know that uh, past well-intentioned efforts, especially at the federal level, to fight poverty with big bureaucratized government-run uh, programs have not been e effective. Often they've done more uh, harm than good. But does that mean that there is no role uh, for the national government in fighting uh, 
poverty, or do you see some role that the national government would play? If not, should this be a state issue, or is this an issue simply for private charity? What's your uh, view? Obviously, it should be a state issue. It shouldn't be a federal issue uh, because it has. You even did it. Didn't, doesn't work uh, very well. So no, no, it should be a state issue. But it has a responsibility. If you understand the economic environment that is necessary that the federal government can create, sound money. Don't don't overregulate. Don't overtax. Don't run up deficits. That's the environment that the federal government creates. Destroys the job. That whole system of taxation and monetary policy sends our jobs overseas. So yes, they have a responsibility. But to say, well, all right, yes, there's only a few people who need our help. So we're going to give we're going to give food stamps for the very needy. Well, what happens is you give food stamps for the very wealthy. And you endorse that principle 100%. We're running out of time, but oh, is time up? Time's I'm very sorry, uh -huh. David. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm. Congressman Ron Paul. Thank you. And next, former Ron Paul, the Republican candidate for president. There, one more left. The former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney at the.